Welcome back to this course on polymer chemistry and in this lecture number 22 we are going to continue uh, the first half of our discussion on chain copolymerization. We will cover the remaining part of uh, the chain copolymerization discussion we are having and then take from there uh, we will start the new, new topic or uh, new synthetic procedure uh, namely ring opening polymerization. Now, uh, if you look at the slides, uh, you know we had uh, during last two lecture the in our discussion on chain copolymerization, we basically covered uh, these uh, topics, uh, different types of copolymers, importance of copolymerization and copolymer composition, the microstructures, alternate random blocky structure, how the reactivity difference between the monomers actually give this type of copolymer mi microstructure and uh, we have talked about uh, co copolymerization composition drift with time and then we talked about uh, how the monomer reactivities uh, and different types of chain initiation um, you know types of chain initiation actually uh, determine these values of uh, the reactivity ratios. In, in today's lecture, we will just cover uh, these three topic, uh, we will talk about QE scheme uh, and then very briefly about ionic copolymerization, how that is different uh, from radical copolymerization and, uh, and just a brief uh, idea about uh, the type of application this copolymerase goes. Now, in in the last lecture, we talked about uh, you know different factors contributing to the reactivities of this the, the monomers and in turn the reactivity ratio, the value of the reactivity ratios of these monomers. We talked about uh, the resonance stabilization of the substituted group. We talked about uh, the electron charge density, electronic charge density. We talked about the steric effect and and so on. And now, all these factors actually contribute uh, to the reactivity of the monomer in such a way that uh, it is very difficult to distinguish the contribution from each of these factors in the reactivity of the monomers. Hence, it is very difficult to uh, get a quantitative idea or it is very difficult to predict. Uh, the reactivity ratios uh, of uh, the monomers from a given structure. Nonetheless, uh, one semi empirical method uh, proposed by Price and uh, Alfre is often used uh, very commonly to uh, sort of get the reactivity ratios of different monomers and a ranking between different monomers uh, in terms of their reactivities. Uh, there is a semi empirical approach and uh, this, uh, this is uh, the QU, QE scheme we are talking about and this is a, we are talking continuing our discussion on radical copolymerization. So, it is applicable for radical copolymerization and this scheme is based on uh, the assumption that the rate constant, rate constant of reaction between a propagating radical P, this is a propagating radical P with a monomer, with a monomer, monomer M. Now, this react rate constant you can write K P M, this is a rate constant for reaction between a propagating polymeric radical P and a monomer M is given by this expression where these two terms are the reactivity measure of the reactivity of the polymorphic radical and this is the measure of reactivity of the monomer and these two term E p and E m they are the measure of electronic charges electrostatic charges on the polymer radical and the uh, monomer respectively. So, if I write uh, 
from this the expression for R 1 which will given by k 1 1 by k 1 2 I should write. Now, this both cases the polymer radical is at the end is a, 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 a same. So, this will get cancelled. So, I can write q for m 1 q for m 2 exponential for 1 1 1 e m 2. You can get the expression from k 1 1 for k 1 1 and k 2 and if you do the ratio you get this to this this because these are same radical 1 and 1. So, this cancel out. So, you get uh, this where this is the measure of reactivity of monomer 1 and this is the measure of reactivity of monomer 2 this is the charges electrostatic charges on the polymer radical and the monomer. Now, another assumption is made in this approach is that E p 1 is same as E, e m 1 and we can we will write this as E 1. The assumption is that the electrostatic charge on the polymer radical which has at the end a monomer 1 structure and the electrostatic charge on monomer is same and which we writing as E 1. So, similarly we can write E p 2 E m 2 as E 2. So, again the assumption is that the electrostatic charge on the polymer radical and the monomer are same if the monomeric residue at the end of the polymer radical is same as the monomer we are talking about. So, if I can write similarly for R 2 q now because q is always uh, talking about always uh, related to monomer. So, we can uh, you know ignore or we can remove this term monomer m we can just write q 1 and q 2. So, now we can write q 1 and q 2 and we have seen r 1 is q 1 by q 2 exponential minus e 1 e 1 minus e 2. Now, essentially these two relates uh, the reactivity ratios uh, of the monomers to the electrostatic, electrostatic charge on the monomer. We, we do not have any any term which is related to the polymer radicals these all the terms are related to the monomer. So, basically this relates uh, to the reactivities of the two monomers and the electrostatic charge uh, on the two monomers. Now, if we uh, multiply these two we get this value for R 1 R 2 which is basically the measure of we have seen earlier is measure of alternating tendency. If it is close to 0 then they, the monomers will produce a alternating microstructure if they are close to 1 then the two monomers will produce a random copolymer and if they are equals uh, both are equals to 1 then obviously, R 1 R 2 will be uh, equal to 1 then that will be uh, exactly random copolymers. So, R 1 R 2 will be given by if we can multiply these two it will be given by exponential minus E 1 minus E 2 square. Now, this expression is in sync with our understanding till now. Now, if E 1 is very close to E 2 that means, the electronic charges of the double bond in the monomers are very close 
then obviously this will become close to 1 and we get a random copolymers random copolymer now if the double bond for the two monomer has a different electrostatic, electrostatic charge if they are then they are what will happen r1 r2 will be close to 0 that means their reactivity you know they they will produce uh, a more uh, a, a copolymer which is more closer in alternate uh, uh, alternate copolymer rather than a random copolymer so if e1 minus e2 goes up then uh, it will be uh, an, an extreme for say e1 is e2 we will get r1 r2 close to 1 which will give ideal copolymerization as we expect and if they are if this is goes down so they are they are equal and then you get this if they are different then r1 r2 will be closer to zero producing a alternate copolymer which is uh, in sync with our understanding whatever we have discussed till now now how how do you get these uh, values for q and e now arbitrarily it has been assigned the styrene styrene has been assigned uh, sort of arbitrarily a value of q is uh, 1 and e is 0 0.0.8 and you and rest of the monomers are compared with the value of styrene what hap you uh, individual monomers are copolymerized uh, with styrene and from the experimental values of r1 and r2 you can use these expressions where if you consider one as styrene then you know q1 you know u1 hence you will from these two expression and you also know r1 from experiment r1 r2 from experiment so, from using these two expression, you will be able to find out the values for q2 and e2. So, so monomers are copolymerized with styrene, and you get uh, the experimental values of R1 and R2, and from known values of styrene uh, having q is 1 and e is uh, minus 0.8, you can get the unknown values for the second monomer. And once you get the individual values for different monomers they are those values of q and e are further defined uh, by copolymerizing um, monomers other than styrene so basically you first copolymerize with styrene and get the experiment values of r1 and r2 and get um, from the expression you get q and e for the unknown monomers and then it refine further these values of q1 q and e for the other monomers uh, by making copolymers between them. Now, obviously, this is q is a measure of uh, reactivity as we have seen and uh, e is a measure of electrostatic charge. So, if q goes up the reactivity will go down up and E goes down, the value of u goes down because it is a measure of electron density, electrostatic charge. So, basically, electron density on the double bond. If there is electron donating group, then the electronic density or electrostatic charge will go up, then key value will be uh, going up. And if there is electron withdrawing group, which basically reduces the electron density on the double bond and uh, hence the electrostatic charge it will be more of a lower number. So, electron density T goes down at electron density goes up and the value is negative 
E is negative when the double bond in say this monomer the double bond this electronic reach compared to a ethylene molecule it is a simple plane double bond. So, if you so if you look at few datas of uh, the numbers for q and e styrene is arbitrarily taken as 1 and minus 8 minus 0 0.8 and if you compare with other monomers say like other conjugated diene like isoprene and butadiene because they they are they can easily stabilize the radical by resonance their reactivity is high so q is high and they also basically act as the electron donating group so increase the electron density in the double bond so basically this value is negative and is negative means is equal to electron rich negative is a charge for electron so negative means electron rich now if you compare the monomers having electron withdrawing groups like MMA and acrylonitrile, the reactivity comes down compared to styrene because they cannot stabilize as much as styrene can do a propagating radical. Whereas, because they have electron withdrawing group, the charge on the double bond actually lower, it is more of a positive charge. So, you get a positive value and acrylonitrile is more strong electron withdrawing group. So, it has a higher positive value compared to MMA and compare this vinyl chloride and vinyl acetate which is basically as we have known from our earlier discussions uh, done in several times their reactivity is very low because they cannot stabilize the radical propagating radical. So, their reactivities are low. So, Q values are low and uh, they are they basically very weakly donating or electro withdrawing groups. So, the values are very low either positive or negative depending upon what is the net electron withdrawing effect or electron donating effect. Look at this monomer malic, malic anhydride, we know um, the structure of malic anhydride. Now, this is this is a very two, two very strong electron withdrawing group. So, basically the electrolytic charge will be much more positive compared to a ethylene group and that is why the value for E is uh, quite high positive 2.25 and these values will vary uh, it is not that these values are very fixed values, but this value might vary little bit uh, uh, depending upon the condition of the reaction and so, but the trend will remain same. So, absolute values of this monomer Q and E value might change, but the trend will always remain same depending uh, uh, irrespective of the condition. And the because it cannot stabilize the, um, the, the, rad, the radical much, so their reactivity the also comes down. So, in general we can write that if uh, your monomer can stabilize uh, the resonance uh, the double uh, the propagating radical by resonance the reactivity is high then q would be greater than 5 if they cannot uh, stabilize by uh, resonance then q would be lower so basically q is a measure of resonance stabilization. So, now we can, uh, so if you know these values, then we know that if the two, two monomers which are having very electrostatic charge, having very positive charges like acrylonitrile and malic anhydride. 
they will be difficult to copolymerize. On the other hand, if you take malic anhydride, right, the monomers are very much electrostatically positive, positive. So, so homopolymerization of malic anhydride right is very difficult, it does not happen. Now, if you take malic anhydride and copolymerize with something which has a negative value of E, that means they have a electro positive uh, electron rich double bond, then obviously the, there will be attraction between the two polar polarities and there will be possibilities for uh, I know it, the, the copolymerization will be much easier. So, whereas malic anhydride does not homopolymerize, but it can easily copolymerize with uh, butadiene or styrene okay, because their charges are opposite. So, they, the monomers can attract each other and, uh, and do the reaction. So, uh, so basically now we know that uh, uh, with this uh, uh, how to what are q and e and how what is the basis of these values q and e how to experimentally or semi empirically get these values of uh, q and e uh, uh, in comparison to uh, arbitrarily assigned values of uh, uh, styrene and from the these values of q and e we now can predict uh, whether two monomers can copo will copolymerize or not uh, and their uh, sort of ranking in their reactivities and so. So, with this we will move to uh, we will basically uh, completed our discussion on radical copolymerization. Uh, we will move uh, uh, and discuss uh, very briefly about uh, uh, ionic copolymerization and uh, Ionic copolymerization are not very often done, you know. Typically, as we have said earlier in our discussion in earlier lectures, that carrying out ionic polymerization is always difficult. So, unless there is a uh, specific requirement, uh, like you are making a, uh, a, a, a specialty polymers, like uh, then um, there is no point of uh, uh, making these polymers by these ionic methods. That is why uh, these uh, copolymers are not uh, um, usually uh, synthesized uh, by doing uh, ionic copolymerization from a mixture of two or more monomers. But um, copolymerization is done by ionic polymerization to make block copolymers, where you first make a block of one monomer and then add the second block uh, to get a block copolymers. Nonetheless, uh, if we compare uh, ionic copolymerization uh, and have with the radical copolymerization, we can uh, understand the differences and uh, in that way we can uh, understand uh, several characteristics of ionic copolymerization. Now, unlike radical copolymerization, uh, this ionic copolymerization is uh, much more selective, you know not many uh, monomer pair undergo copolymerization. So, the, the number of co-monomer co pair you can choose which you can use to make uh, uh, a copolymer uh, by ionic method is limited uh, and we, comp we, we know that uh, in case of radical uh, copolymerization basically there are numerous options where you can choose two monomers and make copolymer from there. And we know that cationic uh, copolymer uh, mono, the monomers which are having electron donating group um, as a substituent are copolymer will copolymerize by cationic method uh, and the monomers having electron don withdrawing group as a substituent will undergo copolymerization with anionic method. Typically uh, or generally the tendency uh, of this copolymerization are uh, um, towards ideal behavior, because when as I said that the number of monomers are limited. So, only those monomers which are having reactivity towards a cation, they undergo cationic copolymerization and the monomers which have activity reactivity towards anion, they go they undergo anionic copolymerization. So, they are the monomers which undergo ionic copolymerization, their reactivities are not too different. So, they typically or generally uh, have 
ideal type um, uh, copolymer. They make a typically ideal um, copolymers. And of course, uh, like uh, at the homopolymerization, we have discussed uh, the reactivity of a ionic polymerization will depend upon the initiator you are choosing and the medium polarity, solvent polarity and the temperature. So, so if you are talking about copolymerization, the values of R will change with the different types of initiator, medium polarity and temperature. Some examples of uh, the commercial copolymers, uh, as we said earlier the styrene is uh, very styrene homopolymer or polystyrene. Polystyrene is a very brittle polymer which breaks uh, easily and also it is uh, very having poor, uh, very poor solvent resistance. or chemical resistance. So, to improve what is done, styrene is copolymerized with acrylonitrile, nitrile, where uh, the amount of acrylonitrile is limited to 10 to 40 percent by which you can or the solvent resistance property of styrene is improved. So, this copolymer has much uh, improved solvent resistance property compared to polystyrene. But uh, Acclonite is also are brittle, so polyacclonite is also brittle, so they, it, this copolymer does not have a significant improvement over, uh, you know, over the uh, polystyrene molecule homopolymer in terms of brittleness. So, what is done? A styrene butadiene rubber is used where a um, rubber butadiene having low T g, it gives a rubbery uh, uh, um, domains in the copolymers and uh, as a result this copolymer becomes uh, rubbery or elast el elastomeric and this copolymers are typically synthesized by emulsion or ionic polymerization. This, this copolymers with high styrene comp containing high, high amount of styrene can are used as a latex paint where the styrene is, uh, is costing little bit with uh, unsaturated dicarboxylic acid. And uh, to combine or to improve both the solvent resistance and, imp and impact properties of styrene, one mm, very common approach is taken is a making a sort of tar polymer where you have acrylonitrile which improves the solvent resistance, butadiene which improves the impact properties and styrene which gives you the heat resistance properties. So, this is a very commonly used uh, polymer as, as a homopolymer uh, as a as such or as a blend with some other homopolymers like polystyrene and uh, polycarbonate and others. Styrene can be cross-linked with a small amount of divinyl benzene um, cross-linker that will make cross-linked uh, spheres cross-linked product which can be used as a packing material for the columns in size exclusion chromatography. And there are other examples of copolymers which are um, available commercially like EV ethylene vinyl acetate copolymers, unsaturated polyester and so on. There other examples, uh, uh, but I am not spending much time on discussing those uh, applications here. What we will do now, we will move to uh, the next polymerization method which is uh, ring opening polymerization or in short ROP. ROP by name as the name suggests, it is a ring opening polymerization. So, you have a ring the monomer in having ring structure and you polymerize it and make a linear polymer. Now, uh, the feasibility of this uh, polymerization from a ring to linear 
product linear mo uh, ring monomer to or cyclic monomer to a linear product you know, like all other reactions depends both on uh, thermodynamic and thermodynamic and uh, plus kinetic factor. We have discussed this thermodynamic factor earlier also while discussing uh, in, in ring formation, cyclic formation in step growth polymerization. If you can recollect uh, from um, about uh, four or fifth, fifth or sixth lecture, where we talked about the tendency of cyclic ring formation in step growth polymerization. The same logic applies here about the thermodynamic factor. Now, if you look. Uh, the data if we compare so let us talk about the data and then we we'll can understand the thermodynamic factor in uh, uh, more clearly. Now, these are the data of uh, all the three del G gas free energy change, enthalpy change and entropy change. Now, I have made it T del S to compare and put it in the same scale. This is from cycloalkane liquid cycloalkane to linear crystalline polymers. Now, when you are talking about cycloaxin, these are basically we are talking about polyethylene, these are all polyethylene, whether you start from a 3 member ring or 4 member or 5 member, these all gives you polyethylene. Now, these are these values here shown here, these are all semi empirical values, they are not experimentally determined, they are um, semi empirical values. Now, if you look at the data as the ring size increases from 3 to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, the, the ring, the lower member ring 3 and 4 member ring, they are quite highly strained, 3, 4 members are strained because of bond angle strain, they are having high energy because of bond angle strain, whereas 5 member ring are strained due to eclipse conformation and 7, 8 member ring having also strained because of transannular conformations. Now, if you look at these numbers, the enthalpy change on polymerization from a 3 member cyclic ring to a linear polymers, it is highly negative. And If you just talk about linear polymers, what about first let us talk about del S. Now, del S will be negative because the monomers are getting joined and making a linear co linear polymer. Now, in if you talk about the same molecular weight, obviously, if you have a larger ring, less number of monomers you require to make the same length of polymers. So, your del S would be less negative your if your ring size is larger. So, if you can and if you see that if your ring size increases your del S value is decreasing is becoming less and less negative. But, if you follow the del G value, Gibbs free energy value and del H value, they are almost having same trend. So, basically the polymerization, this polymerization is dictated mainly by the enthalpy change. Now, because 3 and 4 member ring are highly strained, when they open up and polymerize, it gives up lot of this energy which was already this um, which is getting released because of ring opening. 
similar also true for high high uh, the, the um, rings with size of 7 8 carbon six membered ring is actually little higher than zero if you compare it's slightly higher than zero so basically six member ring is not thermodynamically feasible the opening ring opening polymerization of six member ring is not thermodynamically feasible so basically now from this thermodynamic data we know that it is uh, easy to ring open polymer ring opening it is to carry out ring opening polymerization on 3 4 member ring and say 7 member ring 5 member ring also will polymerized uh, uh, by ring opening method whereas 6 member ring is not uh, that feasible to uh, or basically is not feasible to polymerize thermodynamically however can you make take a say 3 membered ring or a 4 membered ring and or say 5 member ring can you make polyethylene by this route this way can you make polyethylene from either of this either of this by ring opening polymerization the answer is no because it is not only determining by determined by thermodynamic feasibility there has to be some kinetic pathway through which you can carry out the polymerization basically this is saturated ring and there is no place where you can carry out a say electrophilic or neutrophilic attack by external and open the ring and then carry out the polymerization so this is this uh, molecules even if they are thermodynamically feasible they do not undergo ring opening polymerization so what do you need you need a say you need a heteroatom in the ring in the cyclic ring which if you have a ring like say ether molecule z is ether or say a ester or say a amide then what you can do there is a if you use acid or base they can actually do nucleophilic or electrophilic attack on this ring and ring open and then which can react with another ring cyclic molecules and let the chain propagate so what we what you basically need what you basically now know that simple cyclic rings like cyclo um, cyclopentane or cyclobutane they do not undergo um, ring opening polymerization you require a heteroatom which will actually enable a electrophilic or a nucleophilic attack by external agents by which the ring will open and then start the propagation um, reaction and which will finally lead to a polymer molecule so the the types of monomers we there is a, is a different structure where basically these are the types of monomer you can you can uh, do a ring opening polymerization so basically all have um, a heteroatom in the ring whether it's a ether group or a or ester or amide whatever is the case now that actually enables a electrophilic or nucleophilic attack uh, from external agents which will ring open first and then propagate this is this will form and give polyphosphogen if you have a cyclic siloxane molecule it can open up to give you linear polysiloxane if you have a lactone give you polyester if you have a lactam it will cyclolactam it will give you a linear polyamide molecules now the 
the chart of the you know thermodynamic feasibility which we shown that was for ring cycloalkanes not this type of monomers where you have a heteroatom so the absolute value in this graph will change if we consider now a cyclic ring having heteroatom but the trains more or less remain same so again the the trend of you know thermodynamic feasibility will decrease as you increase from 3 to 6 and then again uh, again go up if you increase the ring size so basically if you have cyclic ethers say tetrahydro pyran or a 1 4 dioxane they do not undergo polymerization whereas uh, this actually undergo uh, ring opening polymerization. Now, let us talk about uh, few characteristics of uh, ring opening polymerization and, uh, and we will talk about uh, the mechanism and kinetics of uh, ring opening polymerization. Now, as we discussed if you have a cyclic ring here, then you need first to ring open the ring to open up and then start the propagation reaction. Now, if you have a radical initiator, say if you have a radical initiator, now it is unlikely that this will interact or react with this and ring open that is not very feasible. So, you either need a cation or a anion to sort of initiate a ring opening polymerization. So, initiation by in case of ring opening polymerization the initiation is done by the same types of ionic initiators as in the case of ionic polymerization of carbon carbon double bonds. We have discussed in length about the cationic polymerization and anionic polymerization of carbon carbon double bond and those are the same types of initiators uh, will be used to um, basically polymerize uh, the cyclic rings and make a ring opening polymerization. So, radicals uh, radical initiator is not uh, basically applicable in terms of in case of ring opening polymerization. Now, because we are talking about initiation by ionic initiator. So, you have um, those different types of species covalent species between the the ion and the counter ion whether it is present as a covalent species or ion pair or free ion those uh, different types of association between the reaction reactant center and the um, counter end possible. Hence, there is a tremendous effect of the solvent and the counter ion in case of ring opening polymerization as well as was in the case of the linear ionic polymerization of um, the double bond. Now, this is a chain polymerization that is interesting because the polymers you are making. So, if you have a lactone you are opening up and making a polyester or, or, or you have a lactam you are opening up and making a polyamide. Now, polyester polyamides are typically synthesized what we have discussed earlier they are synthesized by step polymerization, but in this case we are making the same types of polymers which we knew till now that they are typically synthesized by step growth polymerization. They can be synthesized by ring opening polymerization of the cyclic monomers as well and the mechanism here is chain polymerization. So, basically a propagating chain propagate, a chain propagates and the monomers get added and the chain ends. So, the chain keep on propagating. So, there is no reaction between two monomers or there is no reaction between two high molecular polymeric radic polymeric chain as well the same as uh, mechanism same as the chain polymerization. And in because we are talking about ionic polymerization in most cases they are leaving and we know that bimolecular termination is not possible for ionic polymerization. So, there is if there in, in if you take care of the your reaction medium 
very well so that there is no impurities then these uh, polymers are leaving. So, you can make uh, block copolymers or functional um, polymers at, at the end of the reaction. And in this case uh, unlike uh, the linear polymerization of uh, uh, the vinyl molecules, polymerization depolymerization equilibrium is uh, very important. Now, one different this ring opening polymerization with the normal uh, chain polymerization we know is that the rate constant for propagation is in its several order of magnitude lower than normal chain polymerization. It is actually of same order like in case of step growth polymerization. So, though this is a chain, chain polymerization, but uh, the reaction rate or the propagation rate constant is having much lower value compared to a several order of magnitude lower in comparison to normal uh, chain polymerization and the values are similar to uh, the step growth polymerization values. So, the reaction is slower uh, compared to your uh, normal chain polymerization and as you know that uh, we discussed there is most cases these are leaving. So, the molecular weight of ring opening polymerization is dependent on the conversion. So, higher the conversion the higher the molecular weight and also you can control the or estimate or predict the molecular weight from the ratio of mono, monomer and the initiator as in the case of other leaving polymerization we know. So, unlike step growth polymerization uh, here you have uh, control, you can control the molecular weight by the ratio of monomer and initiator and, uh, and like uh, the step growth polymerization the, um, the, um, the molecular weight will depend upon the conversion, but in case of step growth the, the high molecular only get a higher conversion, but in case of being opening you get slow increase in the molecular weight with the or the linear increase of the molecular weight with the conversion of monomer. Now, examples of uh, what will before we come to examples let us uh, talk about the uh, mechanism part uh, how what are the ways this uh, ring opening polymerization done. Uh, if we know this is ionic uh, polymerization, so let us first talk about uh, an ionic uh, ROP. Now, the initiator it is initiated by as I said the same similar uh, ionic initiators uh, as in the case of linear chain uh, anionic polymerization like metal hydroxides, oil coxide, metal hydroxides or metal and coxides or uh, metal oxides uh, etcetera or uh, like uh, we discussed earlier alkyl metal like alkyl lithium or aryl metal you can use to initiate it in the anionic chain polymerization or radical anion also anionic species like uh, sodium naphthalene they also they are the same types of uh, initiator as we talked about uh, uh, the our discussion on anionic chain polymerization. So, what happened? So, you talk about say alkyl metal initiator, you have a alkyl metal initiator. It say I take a ethylene oxide. Now, there is a 
nucleophilic attack by this initiator and the ring will open up. So, you have this now it this will again react with another monomer again similar way. So, you can write as a general you can increase the number of state and you will get a your polymerization. Now, as I said that like other anionic polymerization this is a living polymerization. So, this uh, at the end of the reaction it remains like this. So, you can add a second monomer and make a block of polymer. If you want to terminate the reaction you can exchange these with uh, uh, say uh, adding some water or alcohol and then you can exchange like other uh, we discussed earlier. Now, if we talk about uh, cationic uh, ring opening polymerization. Now, here typically strong protonic acids like say trifluoro acetic acid or fluorosulfonic acid or say triflic acid which are very these these are acids which are very strong acid are required to initiate uh, a ring opening polymerization. Now, let us uh, have. So, this will say talk about now a four membered ether. Now, in this case, there is a nucleophilic attack of the oxygen to the proton and you get you actually form secondary oxonium ion. In all these cases you have a counter ion associated with that you this will react with another monomer and propagate in the chain. So, you can make a polymer like this, this will form um, secondary oxonium ion. This is tertiary oxonium ion. Now, we have been talking that you, you need a very or very strong acid, because if your counter ion have sufficient, if your acid is not that strong, then this counter ion will have sufficient nucleophilicity to either attack the oxonium ion or a proton and stop the reaction there itself. So, for, for that you require a very strong acid, so that the nucleophilicity of the 
counter and will not be enough to compete with the addition of monomer or the reaction of monomer with the uh, oxonium ion. Similarly, if you have little bit of moisture present in the medium or if you have water molecule, then this will easily compete with your monomer with the oxonium ion and then terminate the or disrupt the reaction immediately. So, like earlier uh, when you talked about cationic polymerization, here also you need to uh, have a very uh, stringent requirement of uh, so that you do not have a uh, moisture uh, any moisture present in the system. Now, other types of initiator we talked about those uh, catalyst and co-catalyst like BF 3 and uh, H2O catalyst and other types this can be also used uh, uh, in this uh, uh, ring opening polymer cationic ring opening polymerization also. Now, at the end as uh, this will remain leaving the only thing in, in case of cationic polymerization as you can imagine that if your uh, chain is having is you have a linear chain at the end you have a cationic group and an anionic counter and then you can if you have oxygen here then it can do intramolecular reaction and form a linear molecule plus a ring molecule and where it can also react with a another linear molecules and then stop this chain and form a site in, in, in middle of another chain. So, from there a branching can happen. So, this, this is these are the side reaction where chain transfer takes place uh, intramolecularly within the chain forming a ring structure and another linear molecule or if there are intramolecular chain transfer reaction happen then there will be possibility of bunching uh, uh, in, in this case. And in this case also if you want to stop the reaction you can uh, add uh, agents which by which it can uh, external agents which will terminate the cationic chain end. Now, with this I think uh, we have discussed uh, the ring opening polymerization. Now, let us talk about few examples of uh, commercial ring opening polymerization. Uh, these are the typically these are the polymers which are uh, available commercially which are made by uh, ring opening polymerization. For example, polyethylene oxide and polypropylene oxide they are synthesized by an ionic ring opening or corresponding cyclic monomer of ethylene oxide and protonic oxides. Polytetrahydrofuran can be synthesized or used synthesized by cationic ring opening polymerization of tetrahydrofuran. Polyacetals are synthesized by cationic ring opening polymerization of thioxane and as I gave examples of aliphatic polyesters from lactones and polyamides from lact lactams and this is also very common where linear polysiloxanes or silicones are synthesized by anionic or cationic ring opening polymers of cyclic siloxanes. So, with this we uh, end our discussion of ring opening polymerization and in, in the next lecture uh, we will start our discussion on uh, stereochemistry of polymerization and subsequently in another lecture we will talk about uh, coordination polymerization. So, we will uh, start uh, stereochemistry of poly polymers and polymerization process in our next lecture.